too. And yes, Sam. <laughs> hello, hello. I watched you get hit in the face with the oh, little ring light. It oh, came in oh. hot like a fireball. And it's like, wham! Crit to the face. Yep. Saw, <laughs> that was great. I saw a flash of colors for I was impacted right in my eyebrow. <laughs> uh, in the just, whole eyebrow. I was just trying to move my camera, my computer, man. Nah, dude, uh, you can bring your mic in a little bit closer. Just, just, just a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. That, that's good. That's good. good. Uh, are we, dude? I can. Are we getting good sound in our uh, in our streams this time? Uh, you know what? Uh, sure I can. We have. We have <laughs> audio, so I'd say that's a relative win. You better check it again, just in case. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the the last two times was a little iffy. If any of uh, y'all uh, have been keeping up, we, we've been fucking up. So th that that's the main thing right there. But live and learn. We are nerds. We fuck up on a regular basis and we learn from our fuck ups because true. we are also D&D &D players. Let them yeah. cook. Let them cook. <laughs> and our DMs would never fuck up at the table. No, no, certainly oh, no, not the dungeon masters. Oh, you also know what I, uh... I'm gonna need my vision. <laughs> Speaking of fuck-ups, here, let me, uh, fix my fuck-up. What'd you do, dude? The fact that you haven't noticed means it's all good, so... Don't worry about it. Listen, Sam, that kind of logic uh, works uh, damn well for my wife in my relationship. This That's not working here. <laughs> like, oh, if, if he doesn't notice, then, like, <laughs> he doesn't know that he fucked up. Like... <laughs> You got me paranoid now. <laughs> oh, also, I don't know if uh, you came up with a name for this episode already. But, uh, uh, I threw an, a slapstick kind of name on there, and it'll become relevant in, uh, later on as we go. So oh, yeah. we'll see. But in order to get there, let's start the show. Welcome to Dungeons and Talk Shows, the talk show that brings you monsters, news, homebrews, dice. Uh, sometimes there's a five-headed fucking goose in there somewhere. I am your host, Orion. I am your host, Sam, and this man is pretty, pretty cooking right now. You know, let him go. Let him go off. Mm, dude, I got hungry earlier today, so I started a fire in my front yard, and then we cooked a fish with it. Hell yeah. What kind of fish? Uh... I think it was cod, but you know, the dad in me said, I'm firing up the, the my front yard to cook some fish for the halibut. Fire. It wasn't even halibut though, right? Uh, no, it was cod, but you, it's kind of a, you know, you, you take the puns the where you can get them. <laughs> if you ever father children, you'll understand. I guess I will never understand. <laughs> Dang. Well, we have a guest with us today. Uh, why don't you introduce yourself? What's up? It's your boy, Hashi Cricket, cool in the bean because I look too mean. You already know what it is. Hey, if I, if I do recall, this is not the first time a boy is showing up on this here show. I uh, was supposed to. Well, we, we've tried to have him on the show before. Yeah. You sure? Uh, we, yeah. we scheduled him a few times. Life got in the way. It, it, it's hmm. the way of the dice at that was point. Was it one of the lost episodes? Is that what I'm remembering? Uh, no, no, not not one of the lost episodes. Mm. Uh, Amethyst Dragon was there for one of those, and I, I God was for another one. Yeah, uh, rest, in rest in peace that episode. <laughs> not rest Tarrasque, in peace. You will be missed. <laughs> rest in peace that episode. <laughs> mm, dude, 
dad was amazing. Like he's, he's wild. Like, Oh, he'll go off on about this time. He was riding out in the middle of nowhere. And then he spills a gallon of acid into his lap. And then he just runs ass at stripping his clothes off into some random dude's fucking house. It's like, where's the bacon soda? Go. I need your bathroom right now. Jesus Christ. (laughs) And and they're like, (laughs) and, and they just like, somehow understood that this is this is a man in in need to neutralize some acid that has been poured on his genitals and like why they needed hydrochloric acid and why they were carrying it around in a unsafe container in the middle of nowhere maine is uh you know questionable i'm I'm not gonna gonna say that this looks like some uh some breaking bad type shit but uh <laughs> breaking dad type shit. Yeah, you know. I'm not gonna lie, guy maybe this is how he uh, made his infamous dice. You know, this part of that story. Oh yes, the the uranium dice. Nuclear oh, yeah. powered rolls, my guy. <laughs> if only. Dice of the future. Mm, dice to the I'm future. Really no, no, that would be plutonium. Now plutonium uh, powered dice. Nat twenties all day. That can't oh, be yeah. helped. This, I don't make the rules. Those are just the rules. Look, I haven't seen Oppenheimer, so you may be right. As long as I, got it, <laughs> I haven't fun. seen Oppenheimer, but I trust and believe that motherfucker plays D and D. He strikes <laughs> me as a warlock kind of guy, you know, the kind of dude that starts out real slow, and then he overthrows his patron, and then becomes Death Destroyer of Worlds. I don't you know, know if that reference is applicable. Maybe he never said it. Maybe he did. I'm not Oppenheimer. Are you a cop? Yeah, tell me for a cop. Damn. Speaking of actors who like play Dungeons and Dragons, Vin Diesel is a very prominent Dungeons and Dragons player. Really? Not mm-hmm. only up, yeah, you've never heard of Dean Diesel? He has he has his character's <laughs> name tatted on him, but he has you can't also- say that like that is a thing. <laughs> <laughs> it is D and Diesel. That is where like Matt Mercer made the Blood what? Hunter class for Vin Diesel for a one shot because Vin Diesel wanted to play oh, a character like the movie he was yeah. going to play in coming up, oh and then God, at the time, so yeah, right. I do remember. I still haven't seen yeah, the Dragons movie yet. I, I, I highly it. recommend. I think you might like it. I think I would too. Let's have it for a watch party. But um, hey, that that might be the the way right there. Yeah. Now. Ashy, how did you get into playing D and D? Like, uh, what's your story there? All right, so I'm not gonna go into too much details, but you know, I'm a I'm a good boy with bad boy tendencies. Sometimes made a few. Yeah, hey, some people like that. Made a oh, few and I had to do. Uh, the terminology is called a bullet. It means one year, right? Locked mm. up. So, mm. me being 120 pounds, six feet tall, scrawny little white boy. Terrified of my life. First, the first experience mm. I made in jail. They sent me uh, to a maximum security facility. And all of these people that are in there are people who are spending the rest of their lives. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. And I, I suspect the reason they sent you in there is because, like you said, uh, 120 pounds uh, and skinny uh, like that, you could probably just slip right between the bars. I am a fucking killing machine. I am a menace to society. Damn. Mm. The worst kind of criminal. They put me away. Like, put the key. You know, get that key out of here. You know he brought loaded dice to his first game session, guys. <laughs> get rid of this dude. You heard it live. First time. Why I got locked. <laughs> I stole candies from babies. Okay. Look, man. <laughs> ladies, ladies, look. We know y'all love your I red bet. flags. My boy here. All right, he's a really, he's a king, all right? So I'm not just going to play around like, ooh, he been in jail. No, y'all like that. Don't play with my boy, all right? <laughs> Where do you think I got the phrase cooling in the bean because I look too mean? Exactly. exactly. Was okay, my- okay. That, that sounds like some prison wall. jargon. Put some respect on him, written, right? Literally written on the prison walls. Damn. So. Uh, you know what? No one really suspects the, uh, you know, the American uh, prison system for its poetry. And mm. that's a shame. Honestly, a real crime, you might say. Honestly, so true. Real There's crime. so much art that goes, uh, you know, goes off in prison. That. But 
So uh, one of the, there's a another terminology they call it tierman, well, at least in uh, the northeast of the United States, because I know down south mm-hmm. like they call uh, in the northeast they call when you buy food from the uh, from the store the jail store in the northeast it's called commissary, but down south it's called canteen, and I think out west it's called canteen. Right. Right. So yeah, um, mm. term- I use them interchangeably. I just assume they're the same. Yeah, they are. Mm. But the, the, there's a terminology called a tierman. He's a guy that stays in that same area, and he's the one that cleans up and hands out the food and stuff. This guy is, I think he's doing life there. He comes up to me, and he's showing me some books and stuff that he has. And I happen to see mm. a Dungeons and Dragons handbook. I think it was third edition. I said, you play Dungeons mm. and Dragons? He would, he would, mm. I want to say fit in the nerd militia, but he might uh, be a bit unruly for us. But he brings that he comes back out when we come back out for rec time. He comes out with this like five pieces of paper that he stenciled um, a grid on that he taped together. We weren't we're not allowed to have dice. So he took a mm. he took a uh, I, I have heard that some uh, prisoners like uh, they either make their own dice or oh, they yeah. will like use spinners. Yep, and that's mm. what he, had. he had a spinner. He had uh he had a D he had a D four, a D six, a D twelve, and a D twenty spinner. And it was okay. all the same spinner. So there was right. one ring for the four. Okay, cool. ring for the, yeah, it was pretty cool. Um he had uh with uh a, some random stuff like hair glue and uh Q tips and stuff, he was able to make models too. Um he mm. had ring he had He's guys, making minis? Yeah, really making, cool, yeah. sheets, making character sheets for everybody, blank character sheets. Um, so he's like, do you want to play Dungeons and Dragons? I'm like, yeah, sure, no problem. Mm-hmm. So he gives me, I use the third edition. I'm looking through it. I'm like, you know, I'm going to play as a warlock. And mm-hmm. No, mm-hmm. not a warlock. Was it a warlock? No, cleric. I played as a cleric. Yeah, was- a warlock wasn't exactly a, a big thing in uh, third edition. If I remember co- correctly, I think warlock was a prestige class. You know what's interesting? I'm really glad that like most of your experience is in third edition because a lot of the well, not a lot of the, but I think uh, gargoyles, which is the topic of today's episode, uh, were a lot more interesting in third edition. From what I mm. They look metal as fucking third it edition. Looks so fucking cool. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you could put up like a, an image of them, but with, when mm. the time comes, my DM uh, you know. he gets me and I think one other person to play and he's playing too as a player character as well as on top of mm. and uh it, he didn't come up with like his own homebrew stuff he followed like a guideline from the dm's uh handbook and stuff and uh i'll All never right. forget. he goes it, it almost played like a video game where it was just go from point a to point b kill everything in between and pick up the loot and whoever has the most kills at the end would uh would get a special award like a magic item or a loot drop mm-hmm. or something whatever mm. right yeah and, older uh, editions were like that because like the game like, style was very different like a gaming culture for D has really evolved over the years yeah like a like modern fifth edition is more role play heavy while like older editions were more dungeon crawly mm-hmm. and like third editions like very like hey it's kind of like a, a crunch, like a, you go and you just kind of like break shit kind of a game style. You know? <laughs> really, right, right. There's no uh, go and talk to this NPC to pick up a quest or anything like that. It was just there's enemies in front of you. What action do you take? Right. Uh, so mm. I, st- I studied the handbook as best as I can and I built my character sheet. And I forget how exactly, like what, what I think there might have been a point system allotted, kind of like Fallout in skyrim and stuff like that all i know is right, that yeah. i built my character that unless i hit uh a one i'm always going to make an i'm always going to make an attack i'm always going to connect mm-hmm. so mm. funny watching my dm get frustrated because he was playing as a barbarian and you know right. i let him have his moments where he would shine and stuff where i'd let him get his kills and stuff mm. there was a couple of times i could tell where i would do something and he would throw i think he threw a red dragon at the party, and we were only like level five because I was just off. And <laughs> oh my god! So I made him mad because I had, I forget. I remember I had leveled up enough 
that I was able to, I think it was like a second class or something, but I picked up a skill mm -hmm. that, allow, that allows me to pick items up, magic hand or something like that, right? Right. <laughs> I, mm. took, I, I took my DM, I took his player character, and I grabbed him with my magic hand and threw him in front of the red dragon so that me and the rest of the party can escape. Damn. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah he <laughs> the look that he gave me was like i'm gonna kill you motherfucker and then i found out later <laughs> on that was it for, for killing motherfuckers so <laughs> I'm glad I that one. but uh <laughs> cool, cool, like, that's learning. hilarious like a lot of people would be afraid to pull something like that given nah. the context of where you're playing nope competitive shit don't care like, I'll, I'll die. <laughs> Literally, I will die Respect. on that. <laughs> you want to be better than me? You want to be better than me. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> That's so but, funny. Dude, DMPCs on the inside. No, no wonder. <laughs> like, uh, it, it, I've seen a lot of D and D horror stories uh, through the YouTubes over the past few years, and it's just like a DMPC is like almost always like one of those uh, big. Uh, uh, you could call it a red flag, really, in a lot of mm -hmm. cases. So it's like, okay, it makes sense that this guy's a kind of on the inside. He's a whipping out uh, old reliable. Reliable. I remember I had invited somebody to play with us, right? Because the mm -hmm. whole part died after I threw the uh, barbarian at the um, red dragon. So we had to start all over. Mm -hmm. And I asked somebody <laughs> So you just invite more people? Like, <laughs> oh no, the party's dead. I guess we need more people. This is my party now. Fucking it up and I'm making it my own. I'm burning this shit down to the ground and rebuilding it. Mm. He was straight with Anarchy it, at its finest. Hell yeah, man. So, same class again, same person, whatever. Right? I, was, I played as my son. I, I played as my son's original, the OC. <laughs> right? And I got my... I got my okay, okay. My... Uh, one of the other inmates to play with us and uh where i was in the maximum security facility you only have i think it's an hour and a half to have rec time and during that hour and a half you have to choose to wash your ass make a phone call get things done and or mm -hmm. you know actually enjoy your rec time so ah. the, this kid that i invited to play with us was shooting the shit talking to somebody else and was interrupting the game because it was his turn to make a move and stuff mm -hmm. right my dungeon master looks at him and he goes stop fucking up my wreck or i promise you i'll get up from my seat and snap your neck <laughs> now, dms gonna... have been wanting to say that for a long time and have it mean <laughs> something <laughs> well, you're, dude you're, you're in a jail trust and believe when you tell your one of your players to shut the fuck up and play yeah. the fucking game Fair. there's some weight there <laughs> that just means he gets to see outside for 30 minutes because he took a court trip you don't give a shit i had to i had to elbow my mm. boy I had to let him know like yo He's a he's a legitimate killer. Before <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you want to fuck with him. He was right, like, right. man, I'm just trying. I'm just trying to get something. I'm like, listen, it was nice knowing you, my boy. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck out there, man. <laughs> Dude, uh, I've you know I I've contemplated what it would be like to play D and D on the inside. So. I decided to look up uh, the local rules for uh, what you're allowed to have in okay, the state wait. of Maine. Hold on, I thought you were going to say something like, I've oh. one been wondering what it's been like. So I took the liberty to go into a prison this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I got myself think that I arrested. <laughs> I'll tell you what, uh, I'll tell you what, Ryan. I was like, you where is the story what going? You are allowed to have in the state of Maine, and I will tell you why, how I think the inmates in the state of Maine will circumvent everything you just said well i i'm certain that they'll circumvent because dude there is not a better class of engineer oh, than perfect. the the engineer you find in one of two situations two of the god tier engineers mm -hmm. a, a stoner without a pipe mm -hmm. and a 
and an inmate with a will to make something. Listen, right, I have right. seen inmates rewire uh, headphones, TVs to pick up new signals. I've seen people make dice out of soap. I've seen I've mm. seen somebody make I've seen somebody smuggle in weed, right? Hell yeah! <laughs> and the, pi- the way that they made a pipe was the craziest thing I ever seen. They took a pen, right, and they took everything out of the pen and they pushed a hole through it, right. Then they took a playing yeah. card and they folded the playing card to make the bowl and they put it into the pen. And this is how you this there's <laughs> two ways to make a lighter, right? The only way that I know officially is that you take a battery and you take a paper clip mm. and you stick the paper clip in through one end. And I think it's the po- I think it's the negative end. And you have the other end hanging over <laughs> right above the positive side. Because when you press it on the positive side, it will light up, it will heat up. So what they did is they got that to heat up and they took a Q-tip and they put it in hair oil, like gel, flammable shit apparently, okay. and they lit it on fire. And then they put, they, 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 they light the weed on fire, shake their hand to put out the match, right? And then they hit it. And then it had the whole area smelling like weed and everybody gets locked down. Damn, <laughs> dude, I, I love that kind of shit. I love the ingenuity involved in this prison stuff. Like, uh, like the first off, I've been holding off on this joke the entire time you were talking when you said they made a uh, dice out of soap. <laughs> I mean, they definitely dropped no, no floor soap, okay, guys. Table rules no floor soap. No soap. <laughs> Look, honestly, prison stuff makes me kind of think about like, like humans and like the caveman times. You know, how mm. we had to like improvise our tools and you know. Well, you gotta make use. Use. You have. I love that shit. Like, it's so interesting. It's like you make mm. do with what you got. Like they say that. I, I bet that carries that. over like into yeah. their characters too. Oh, into cause... their games. Oh yeah, I bet. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. The creativity is probably crazy. Oh, it definitely is. I love it. I love it. So we can definitely talk about this more. But Orion, you got to get into the news. You got some oh, interesting but, stuff well, here. Well, th- there is one thing I wanted to touch on uh, while we still got him, because I understand that oh, yeah. Heshi's got some uh, obligations tonight. Ah, so right, right. I, mean, I, I did look that. into it uh, not too long ago. So. You are allowed to have like a, a certain number of books. I think it was like uh, yeah. maybe like oh, yeah, ten like books or so. No hardcover books. They all must be soft covered, and no book can weigh more than four pounds. Four pounds. Okay, okay. so that that's actually that's, that's reasonable. You could, yeah. if you can get like a uh, somebody to just get you like paperbacks. <laughs> like, yeah. there's tons of paperback RPGs out there. Like, I got one on my shelf. Uh, it's Deadlands, which uh, is very compatible with the third edition rule set, but it's all like the wild, spooky West. So Listen, you could have a variety of game types to work you with. You send right me a there. character. Sheet. You send me a character sheet, whether it's third, second, fourth, or fifth, and you want to see me role play, like how I did when I was in the big house, mm. and play like, uh, this and, and we do it live. I'm for it. Mm. I, will, I, I would be down game. for that, actually. Uh, that motherfucker, uh, Josh, uh, 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 one of our buddies on the server, he he gave me he he gave it to me that, that DM itch. He was talking about uh, playing the One Piece tabletop, and I'm like, uh, you, you know, I'm a fanboy, and, and I'm I'm a DM, and I haven't played I haven't DM'd in a while. Don't tempt me. It's like cocaine. Every day, I thank God for making me a One Piece fan. <laughs> <laughs> what a sentence! Oh my God, <laughs> dude! Uh, the, the the concept of like uh, actually the the playing uh, One Piece as an RPG like you would in prison, <laughs> Yo Ho and Hibbity G. That that's pirate shit. Hell yeah, that's absolutely some pirate shit. I, I'd be down for that. Uh, what I was really <laughs> Because I've seen that in the server. I, what I'm really interested in is if you were to do that as a tabletop RPG, how would you what, one piece? the devil fruits? Uh, mm. They would be like magic items, I, I would imagine. I don't. I mean, I don't uh, know it, too much about 
One uh, Sam's kind of right on that, where uh, I haven't read fully into that part of the PDF that I found, and uh, I intend to read more into it. I've been kind of looking into the other aspects of the book because uh, it's got feats, it's got races, and uh, the I, transponder snails. I've talked about transponder snails I mean, on the I, show. I'm even down to play it if I can. And uh, I mean, I don't yeah. know a whole lot about One Piece, but as far I, I think as the I fact understand, that you don't is good. Yeah, as far as I understand, the devil fruits are like if something you they, up they go get and then they get stronger. So it's kind of like a magic item, right? Or yeah, yeah. Do they, do they uh, consume it or do they use it like a weapon? No, so what happens with devil fruits is they eat it and they gain the properties of that devil fruit. Okay, so it's, it's like a consumable fruit, magic item. Yeah, so if my yeah. devil fruit allows me to, like the main character, turn all the properties of my body into rubber and have the properties of rubber. Yeah, like that's what Luffy has, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and um, it, it varies from person to person. Like uh, one third of all devil fruit are a Zoan type, which is basically you eat it, you get some form of lycanthropy. But the... The funny ass thing about that is uh, there are Zoan users in the show where it's just like, okay, a person didn't actually eat this. It's a it's a devil fruit that turns you into like a dog or some shit. And they fed it to a weapon like there's a bazooka that someone decided to just mash a devil fruit with their bazooka. And then it's just bazooka dog. And there's that other dude where like he fed a devil fruit to his sword and now his sword turns into an elephant. You know what would be an interesting Crazy. thing to do? It's insane. Tabletop it. In order, if I remember my lore correctly, in order to have a devil fruit like powers, you're actually supposed to have a soul. Soulless okay. objects can't have can't because the devil fruit is granted you're granted the power by the sea god, right? Mm, yes. Part of the sea god's life or whatever. I don't know too much because like I said, there's like over a thousand episodes and I haven't watched all of them. Well, said, it would be cool if somebody was to make a PC and was not aware mm-hmm. that they were soulless, and then when they go to eat the devil fruit, uh-huh. they never gained anything. Mm-hmm. You can go into that plot line, that storyline, with why is the character soulless? How does he get his soul back? Stuff mm-hmm. like that. You know what? That's absolutely a doable thing because there are users in the series that could absolutely take someone's soul out of their body and have done so. So having that character be a victim of such a character would be fun. I also feel like uh, as far as uh, the whole thing goes uh, for devil fruits, it's very, it's very warlike warlock, like, you know, cause like uh, it's this otherworldly entity that's within this fruit. And then like, after you uh, get it, you gain this otherworldly entities uh, abilities at, at a contract cost of your, you are now weak to see prism stone and uh, you can't swim. And like, uh, you know, water is now a weakness, you know, I feel like Zoan type uh, fruits would pair very well with a Druid class. Hmm. That makes very, that makes a lot of sense because it's like that whole shape shifty thing. Mm-hmm. I really like the <laughs> weapons in it. Cause like a, you can go, real hard on the weapons and it's like they, there's multiple power systems involved you know, I want to say real quick while we have a lull in conversation thank you to Harley there's, thank uh, you Harley whoever that is on, uh, on YouTube love listening to y'all she says very nice That's oh okay, okay. thank you Harley I wasn't even looking at chat today yeah I don't know if you're a boy or a girl Harley but I'll marry you in <laughs> <laughs> Ah, fantastic. I love it. (laughs) Red flags, looking for love in all the wrong places. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, When when she slips into your live stream chats, you know she's the one. (laughs) Definitely. Dungeon and talk shows, putting together love. (laughs) Wait, this is a a Dungeon and Dragons talk show? I thought this was a dating app. Well, you know, it very well could be. uh, Welcome to our new segment, uh, to bard to fuck <laughs> uh <laughs> i am your host orion and oh today God. we're se- setting uh sam up with uh, hey, what <laughs> yeah well you, you know sponsored sam, by Fenico's bestiary tome of can oh, i yeah. fuck that do we have that i really shouldn't put my dick in that but 
Wait, wait, do we have that audio? If I had uh, that, uh, if I dude, had I did not put... I did not bind that to the soundboard, uh, but I did bind the one? other thing I was working on last week to the soundboard. Yeah, I kind of want to hear the beast area. I know that one was done, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah that one was done. Yeah. Dude, I, I should redo it again because I feel like an amateur hour right there. <laughs> right, go ahead and play your new one. I just Okay, I, let me just uh, pull that up because like, I might have bound it to the soundboard, but I, didn't, I did not key bind it. So uh, this oh, right. is the unveiling of Riker's Ale House, the new sponsor of the show. All right. Oh, let's hear it. Listen up, you miserable lot. If you're looking for a tavern to put hair on your chest, get your sorry hides over to Riker's Ale House, the meanest, toughest, and rowdiest joint this side of the mountain. Who am I, you ask? I'm Riker, the Orc of Thunder, Bruiser of Brooms, the Conqueror of Kegs, and this is my house of mayhem. We've got ale. We've got it in barrels. If you ain't had our ale, you ain't tasted the true nectar of the gods. It'll make you roar louder than any dragon and hit harder than a hill giant. Hungry? We've got meat on the bone. Juicy, tender, and cooked over an open flame. If it doesn't make your tusk tingle, it ain't worth eating. Entertainment! We got brawls, we got arm wrestling, we got tales of glory and gore. The best fights and stories happen here at Rikers. Challenge me, Riker, if you dare. But be warned, I don't hold back. Orcs, dwarves, humans, elves, we don't discriminate. If you've got a thirst for adventure and a stomach for a hearty meal, Rikers Ale House is your battlefield. The walls echo with the tales of mighty and the fallen. Every war chief's day, we've got a special on our famous Orcs Blood Brew. A concoction so strong, it'll put hair on your warts. So grab your axes, your mugs, and your battle cries, and come over to Riker's Ale House, where the ale flows like a waterfall, and the fights are fiercer than dragon's breath. Riker's Ale House, for the true warriors among us. Be there, or be a goblin snack. <laughs> Bro, i'm gonna be real i, I want to go to this place <laughs> yeah rikers is the place to be oh, from now man. on every campaign i'm running yeah it's got rikers this place does sound pretty lit to be honest <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I, I feel like I could do the do it up a little bit better, but hot damn, Rikers sounds like the place to be. God, you guys might find one in one of the next cities you go to. <laughs> <laughs> be there or be a goblin snack. Jesus, I love it. That was so good. Shout out to Rikers. Thank you. Kinda, Thank it kind of gave me uh, the, the Jackbox like, uh, murder mystery <laughs> voice vibe. Oh, uh, I love it. I just sounds good. Like somebody was trying to sell me something other than my soul. <laughs> sounds like someone's trying to sell me something. <laughs> <laughs> fiddle real quick. Oh, if I want to pay. Mm. I like it, I like ah, it. damn. I, I've got to. I got to put more franchises in my campaigns because honestly, right? Dude, hey man, just, listen. The Rikers franchise just good capitalism is the standstone of the u.s economy <laughs> <laughs> look because i always do i think about like you know your businesses and your games they usually get their word through like what like trade routes right and merchants and stuff they, they gotta have some kind of an advertisement you know they gotta get their business out there so i would laugh if you were to promote riker's ale by having a literal demonic figure appear above the town <laughs> Speaking to them in the same tone of voice, blowing these itty bitty little peasants' mind, telling them to go get right yeah. or else. Yeah. <laughs> well, look at you. You look poor, bored. Go get drunk. <laughs> go commit some sins. Thanks to Riker's <laughs> Ale. <laughs> Riker's Ale House. I love it. I gotta fix my mic real quick. But Sam, why don't you tell us a little bit about the uh, monster for this week? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. So tonight, you know, I, I'm pretty sure this episode will come out in October. Um, and it will be our first October episode. So I want to kind of start it off with a kind of a classic and favorite monster of mine. 
the gargoyle. Mm. I love gargoyles. <laughs> um, so some people know, you know, gargoyles are fairly common. You know, you see them kind of everywhere in games and shows and movies. And I'm going to go into that a little bit later. But uh, so I'll give you a short description of what a gargoyle is. The gargoyles are typically uh, depicted as winged humanoid race with demonic features, generally horns, a talon, uh, tail, may or may not have a beak. Um, kind of depends, you know, on the crafter or you know, race of the gargoyles. Uh, they generally have pretty fairly useful wings, um, being able to fly or glide. Um, they're often depicted having a very rocky like texture to their skins um, and being cap- capable of turning into stone, um, whether by magic or natural ability. Some people aren't really sure. Uh, gargoyles are typically believed to be entities or figures that would ward off evil or malicious spirits or energies. Um, you know, so they're pretty interesting. <laughs> It sounds like they're the, almost, oh, sorry, continue. No, no, what, no, no, what's up? I was going to say, it sounds like they're almost neutral. Yeah, they, they can kind of be, you know, made for any purpose. Oh, okay. Uh, the term originates from the French gargier, if I, I'm not sure if I say that right, uh, which in English is likely to mean throat, or it's otherwise known as gullet. In Latin, gurgio, gula or gargula, gullet or throat, and similar words derive from the root gar, to swallow. Uh, which represented the gurgling sound of water that are usually, you know, known for the use of gargoyles. Whoa, is that Orion? Uh, yep, I just oh, had... Okay. Welcome I had... back, welcome back. It was just a pain in the ass. I, I, can't he- I can't stand hearing myself in multiple instances when I'm talking. It throws me <laughs> me. Like, I've been right, right. an issue all week. And hopefully I get it properly resolved so it stops happening. It's like, mm. I've been trying to do audio books. It's like, okay, how am I supposed to read this book if I'm driving myself crazy trying not to stop when I hear myself? Yeah, that's true. That makes sense. Uh, kills me, man. This but is pretty like interesting, too. Um, the Italian word for gargoyle is, <laughs> I'm going to butcher this one, Dacion or Grande Sporgente. An architecturally Ooh. precise phrase, which means protruding gutter. Uh, Italian also uses gargola or gargulia, I believe, uh, which has a grotesque shape, or when it has a grotesque shape. I fucking I love gargoyles. I love like the the architecture. You know, I love the designs that they can be in. They can really like vary between like anything. You know, and when they're not constructed as a water spout and only serving as an ornamental or artistic function. The typical term for a sculpture, such uh, a sculpture like this, is called a grotesque, a chimera, or a boss, <laughs> which is really fucking cool. There or are also boss. regional, yeah. There's also regional variants called uh, the hunky punk. <laughs> I'm forever calling gargoyle. Wait, wait, no. Yeah. I I know it. I know a, a little bit about the what is it? Hunky punk? Hinky punk? Yeah, the hunky punk. Yeah. The hunky punk? No, it's like a, a that's right. like I remember reading some. Yeah. And just as with uh, the bosses, chimeras, and gargoyles, oh, just as with bosses and chimeras, gargoyles are said to protect what they guard, such as a church from any evil or harmful spirits. Oh, so I don't know how much y'all know, like about gargoyles themselves or like where they came from, right? The roots of like. Who the fuck thought of this creature, right? You know, this idea that this entity protects these areas. You know, why would they do that? You know? Well, I, I've seen them on like a old architecture, you know? Yeah, right. So, you know, it's believed that they place them, you know, not just for the purpose of the water spouts, you know, for, you know, rain and stuff like that, but also to, you know, ward off, you know, evil energies or evil spirits, you know, things like that. Mm hmm. So the French legend of the Gargier uh, was the kind of first or one of the very first, you know, stories, of the kind of creation of the gargoyle uh, sprang up a town, sprang up around the town of Rouen in the 7th century AD 
describes a fearsome battle between an intrepid local bishop, St. Romanus, and a terrible dragon known as the Gargie, a creature with bat-like wings, a long neck, and the ability to breathe fire from its mouth. The Gargie was said to have descended upon the city of ruin and laid waste to the surrounding countryside. The stricken townspeople then turned to their bishop, St. Romanus, to deliver them from this fire-breathing menace. Single-handedly, if the legend is supposed to be believed, St. Romanus captured the Gargie, led it back to Rowan, and burned it. As fire consumed the creature, its wings burned up, and so did its body. However, the Gargie's head refused to burn, as it had been long tempered by the heat of its own fiery breath. So St. Romanus mounted the inflammable head high up on the wall of the church in order to scare off evil spirits and to ensure protection of the town. Hmm. Yep. All Pretty right. badass for a seventh century. That's fucking badass, right? <laughs> oh, man. Dude, that's some that's wild good. shit. My man said, yeah. okay, no problem. I'll save I you. I was glad when I found this story and I was like, oh, I gotta talk about this. But you could use man. that. Yeah, for sure. That's some... That's some inspiration, you know. You can definitely put that in a D and D story, or you could, yeah, you could do For that. Sure, the head of the gargoyles, the gargoyles. Yeah. How did you pronounce it? Uh, Gargier, I believe. There you go. Introduce that as the head gargoyle. Yeah, makes sense. And it doesn't have to be either evil either. It could be benevolent, and the only reason it's attacking you is because you have killed its children. <laughs> and it can have, <laughs> it can have <laughs> a valley where if you kill one. The pain that that one that that was killed felt is felt by all the others. Ooh. Oh, maybe you could tie it in with like that ancient Roman and uh, not ancient Roman, but there's a there's a Greek story about this politician in his youth where he ran around uh, this Greek town ripping the cocks off of all the statues. <laughs> Wait a minute, hold on. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, but that went Damn, from real, burglar? real quick. Fucking. <laughs> <laughs> the bussy the bandit was going on <laughs> well there, there was a greek politician and when he was a kid or a teenager yeah, or whatever he got caught running around <laughs> ripping the dick off the statues <laughs> and he's forever famous for that yeah he was part of the penis patrol man you can't hate the on penis him. patrol man <laughs> <laughs> he's part of the thought patrol he can't he couldn't suffer a thought to see a cock Jesus Christ. Wow. <laughs> There's two risks. The penis is off oh, of the statue. The, <laughs> the statues induce the lust in young women. Like, yeah, damn, I'm that, that, that phallic <laughs> object on that statue is making me so wet right now. My brain's just like, think of more, like, <laughs> more tone no, I'm just imagining, I'm just imagining a priest with a bald head and brown oh, burlap robes just Please running explain. by just punching the shit explain. out of every statue <laughs> fucking dick. Oh, fucking dick. Oh. and then he's got dude, a whole i up. wish regular politicians would do this shit dude what if like okay you just have like a bunch of gargoyles like chilling in a city right and they yeah, all yeah. like just like look over at each other they see this guy running around grabbing statue dicks they're like holy <laughs> shit <laughs> This All right, it's crazy. <laughs> All right, so, don't fuck uh, with that dude. Fuck it in. Oh, fuck we it gotta in. get his ass. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'd be pretty afraid as a as, as a statue if there was a guy yeah, running right? dicks oh off my God. back. That's that's rough. <laughs> anyway, so like I was saying earlier, you know, gargoyles are pretty much everywhere, mm. right? But I feel like they need more love, right? Even Absolutely. though they appear in a lot of media, you know, anything from the Castlevania series to the 1994 TV series, I'm sure everyone saw on Disney or Jetix. You know, Ooh, you got the some of those, the game. <laughs> some of those gargoyles on that show had some riz. Dude, I'm about to I'm about to go into them a little bit because I love them. <laughs> There's also a book that I really like called The Accidental Alchemist. Um, and it has a gargoyle as like one of the main characters. And it's fantastic. Hmm. Um, yeah, it's about this, uh, this alchemist who, you know, discovered the, the what was it called? The, the, the damn, I'm drawing a blank, sorry. The, the, like the fountain of youth, basically. Like the, you know, the philosopher's stone of like, you know. So she's like 100 years old, living in Portland. I fucking love it. It's so good. <laughs> So, gargoyles are a staple mythical creature within history and roots in our lore and stories. Come on, 
Wizards of the Coast, give them some damn love. All right, I'll fucking die on this. <laughs> like, if a show from the 90s could have a line like this, and I'm about to go off. All right, I know exactly the, what line you're we about. All, we all <laughs> know exactly what's about to play. Go ahead and play, brother. 1,000 years ago, superstition and the sword ruled. It was a time of darkness, a world of fear. It was the age gargoyles stone by day warriors by night we were betrayed by the humans we had sworn to protect frozen in stone by a magic spell for a thousand years now here in manhattan the spell is broken and we live again we are defenders of the night we are gargoyles <laughs> brings a tear to my eye right. chill i love it, I love it. <laughs> Honestly, God girls are based, right? <laughs> and I feel like, you know, looking at the show, it's a really good depiction of like what they could really be like, how different they could be, you know, the different types, the different colors, the different makes, you know. And I haven't even gotten to like the Forgotten Realms lore yet. I just I love God girls, but <laughs> honestly, there's not much. It's pretty disappointing. What was the introduction to gargoyles that made you like them as much as you did? The show or uh, just like the creature itself? Like what, what made you be like, okay, gargoyles are the shit? I don't, it was honestly, it was probably the show and then playing like, like Smite, I think, because I like, <laughs> uh, like Amazots, you know, vibes, mm-hmm. heavy gargoyle energy to me. So, like, <laughs> like that's, that's like a core memory in my brain and i'm like since then i've always kind of loved like bat creatures you know? mm. well they are pretty fucking cool like th- th- there's no two ways about it you know that yeah, badass I love how as fuck. creative you know when you when you talk about gargoyles they can be you know a wizard created them from you know flesh and stone from you know in crystal that they found you know dark magics made for good out of marble you know it could be literally anything right i like that yeah you know and they can kind of take whatever form you want like they could be bat like and demonic they could be you know angelic even it's really it's so cool and i love them so much <laughs> how could you not yeah but Anyway, so in the Forgotten Realms, you know, originally gargoyles were the decorative stone statues and water spots placed on buildings to prevent the erosion and staining of the walls, you know. At some point, an unknown mage gave life to these statues, creating monsters that went on to stalk the worlds. Four gargoyles served a mig zoo, defending a tower north of Waterdeep in the year of the prince, 1357 DR. We got some real, like, D&D lore, you know, talking about water. Oh, okay. some actual shit. Yeah. <laughs> Gargoyles could often be found laying underground or in ruins with small groups of their kind. In the Abyss, however, Gargoyles guarded the gates of the, sorry, Ungorth Reddick, the Demogorgon's Fortress, Demogorgon's Fortress that rose from the fetid bogs of the Gaping Maw. <laughs> dude they every time i hear the gaping <laughs> maw i was like oh i just imagine some guy popping out of the fucking woodwork uh, bursting through a wall be like yeah like my <laughs> ex-girlfriend had a gaping maw and i'm just like dude shut the oh fuck up get God. out of my head dude. <laughs> dude i can't wait till we do like a an episode about like the abyss and the nine hells there's so much to talk about Ugh. there really is dude th- that shit's wild that's, that's gonna be like at least a two-parter for each of those <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> So their original nature as statues aided them in what they are adept at appearing, typically still, as if they are made of stone and their hides were rough and thick, similar to stone as well. They favored surprising their opponents either by moving suddenly from their motionless state or by suddenly swooping down on them from a quiet height, you know? Gargoyles were ferocious creatures, often attacking anything they detected on sight, and some were known to love to inflict pain. You can assume, you know, these are the ones in the abyss. Uh, they would torture any victim that they could hold helpless, going as far as eating them, or just to hear their screams, even though they required no food to survive. Yeah, um, they were, and apparently they much preferred the intelligent races. <laughs> so, you know, it, it kind of makes me think of like from, early uh, yeah. Dragon Ball uh, Piccolo, like 
He don't need to eat, but he'll eat a motherfucker. <laughs> right. And something interesting um, that I didn't really know about are the two sub races of gargoyles that we had. Okay. Okay. So it was like three, a granite and marble. No, honestly, no, they're completely different. Um, and like not even getting into the different stone types. These are completely, completely different sub races. So in 3E, we have a CR4 creature called the Capoyant I'm not even sure how to say that. It's spelled so weird. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, I need a aquatic, linguist. <laughs> yeah, it was an aquatic creature related to the gargoyle. They could not fly, but instead swam, using their wings to propel them forward. Other than their habitat, they were the same as their land-dwelling kin, preferring shallow waters to undersea caves. They were known for loving torture, and a number of them, a number of them, lived in lairs beneath the city of Ascarle, near the Purple Rocks. Hmm. Um, there was another subspecies of gargoyles, known as the Margoyles, <laughs> who preferred to live underground and were sometimes found leading a group of normal gargoyles. So I guess these were the upper class of gargoyle. Um, now, do, their skin they, was they much happen harder. to have a very chiseled chin, some uh, roguishly <laughs> handsome features, right, right. and some handsome gargoyles. <laughs> They had the, the more defined wings. You know, they're finely sculpted, I guess. I don't know. Mm. <laughs> I guess these would be natural ones, right? So, yeah. They were, you, you know, can get wild with some gargoyles. Like, just yeah. have them be, like, shaped like all kinds of things. Yeah. You know, what's also interesting about gargoyle, gargoyles sorry, Gorgles. <laughs> is they, they are elementals, right? So you could have margoyles just be, like, a greater elemental gargoyle. Hmm. Dude, you know hear, I mean? hear me out like a, a lava gargoyle yeah. from the plane of fire. Yeah. You got the margoyle, like you got like the lava magma skin, it's like bubbling. That shit would go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> he has like a layer with like a hundred different like crystal, like stone gargoyle. Oh man. Oh dude, the, the flavor potential for days. The loot in there would go crazy because they love <laughs> This would be like going to like a, a like a dragon's den but like you know low scaled obviously but like you know it's crazy and i there's so much Damn. you can do so much creative you know liberty you could take you could have a wizard you know have a castle castle full of gargoyles you know he like i don't know you can make anything up. i i think i had one story um kind of set up for a region in our game where there is a wizard who has a tower he just yeah. has like hundreds of gargoyles, like somewhere in like his just region that people don't go into. Like, okay, so you got like a you know, a, you could run an entire church and it's got like gargoyles, yeah. so they just like bust right in there. Like, you know oh, you what? just rolled They're, up on the wrong like, place. Yeah, and some of them could be intelligent, you know, depending on the make and how well they were crafted, or you know, the spaces they live in. You know, if they live in like cities and stuff. They observe people. They would learn. Shit sounds like some devil may cry shit right there. Yeah, bro. Look, shit. And we're getting to the end about here, so I'll go over their abilities real quick. Mm -hmm. You know, okay, talking okay. about the basic gargoyle, we got the uh, CR2. They speak a mix of common and Terran, you know, the classic elemental language. Uh, the base gargoyle is kind of a chaotic evil. Um, I assume it's talking about the, you know, the abyssal ones. But I... Usually when I think about gargoyles, I think of them as like the neutral so they could take kind of any path. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, that makes a lot of sense just because like right. gargoyles are just kind of like they're they're really their own thing. They're they're yeah. fucking stone, dude. Right. Like they can I'd have rather their, people their take it in any or they could be their own, really. Yeah. Any direction. You find so many cases of like they were created and like they live as long as their stone lasts or until they are destroyed. Right. So like mm. or until their until their magic is gone, you know, like, I would imagine these to be a primarily dwarven construct. It could be. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah, because like dwarves, they they love stone. They want to craft stone. And if they're going to make yeah, something like magical, it. they're going to make it out of stone. Something no, that I, I would be very curious. I'm like, what if like dwarves, like say they found like a temple, you know, an old, long forgotten temple. And there's just like. A bunch of gargoyles chilling in there and they're like oh we don't know where to go like we've just been here like master <laughs> just died like a hundred years a ago goyle. yeah <laughs> they're like oh our master died like a hundred years ago we've just just been chilling 
we were told to protect <laughs> this place. Like <laughs> that's that's how it would be. Like you know, they would just chill. Yeah, that, anyway, that, that could be an introduction to having gargoyles as a playable race. Oh man, look and talking about that, I have a character that I've been working on for a while that I kind of made. That's a gargoyle. I had him be a mm. uh, obsidian eldritch knight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I like it. I, I like the sounds yeah. of it. Yeah, yeah. So, talking about their stats here, we got a 15 for a strength, a 11 for a dexterity, 16 for constitution, uh, intelligence is a 9, 11 for a wisdom, and a 7 for charisma. So, you nice, know, you nice. basic henchman m- mentality. <laughs> Able for growth, but basically, you know, you tell them what to do. Uh, they got pretty good resistances. You know, you got bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing from non magical attacks. That are not adamantine uh, immunity to poison uh, immunity to exhaustion petrified and the poison condition uh, we got dark vision you know and then the false appearance you know able okay, to okay uh, so you everything that you'd expect a gargoyle to have right you know and then you know when you get into the more special cases of you know types of stone materials and stuff like that you can get into different magic types you know different alignments different abilities mm. But fun. you know, base is multi attack, biting claw. Okay. That being yeah. said, uh, I want to ask Heshi our, our favorite uh, question. Yeah. Uh, in a real world fight, could you take one of these on a scale of one to ten? Listen, man. If I could still be, cave, if I could steal candy from babies, I could definitely fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I mean, the question how, how would is, do, what do you think you would notice one in the first place? So, first and foremost, I'm going to just punch the dick off of every statue. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone just knows. Just be safe. <laughs> the weak <laughs> point of a gargoyle but is What dick. I'm going to do is it's going to be a test. Once I bring my hand back to punch the dick off of something, if it moves the fucking gargoyle, that's when I come in. <laughs> With the other fist, grab him by the throat, grab him by the cock, twist it, pull it off. <laughs> I, mean, I hear that moves illegal in karate tournaments. Oh my god! All fair and love and war, and I ain't got no love in me. <laughs> no so, is this like a prison game that y'all play in the yard? Like a y'all like line up and just uh, one guy <laughs> runs around uh, like trying to punch psych you. people out with pretending to punch them in the dick? Hell yeah! I can see it. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> It's a different culture. I can't judge. D and D, Dick and Death Blow. Yeah, that is that is all I have for gargoyles today. I love them. Mm. I hope they get more love. Maybe in the next D and D edition. I don't know, probably not. But you know, we can all <laughs> hope. By the power of the homebrew community, we can give them the love they deserve. Yes. <laughs> next well, campaign. Full party of gargoyles. <laughs> that just sounds like a fun ass one shot. Honestly, now, dude, to set up like a campaign like the show. Oh, dude, man. Sam, you got to be the DM for a one shot like that. <laughs> I would love that so much. Mm. I, I do. If you're going to do a one shot like that, that though, so cool. uh, DM to DM advice. I think you might want to find ways to kind of speed up the combat just a tiny bit because the party that we have drags ass with Ooh. the combat. Oh, shit. I haven't seen this, Pesci. Let's see this <laughs> from. That was a little, little secret gift for you. Oh, is this from you? Did you make this? Who made this? I didn't make that. I found that, but I thought it would be interesting for you. Oh, shit. Yeah, you should, uh, should talk about this for our homebrew segment. Maybe. Yeah, Ryan should definitely post this as a link to this episode. Hey, yo, this is really good. What the heck? Dexterity, but hey, what the hell? Oh man, I'm gonna find the creator for this bad boy. Uh, we gotta give the credit all the time, Sam. I will not stand for somebody yeah. to make something, they have it show on uh, the, our show, and then get no credit. Yeah, yeah, no, I'll be damned if we don't plug your stuff, guys. Oh, Sam, <laughs> your, your camera's glitching out. Is it? What's wrong with it? But uh, your your head just kind of like it's all like a pixeled. You're kind of bobbing back and forth. It's just like oh, 
That was too weird. Sorry, I was trying to read, but I have to like get real close to my screen. <laughs> this is really cool. I'll have to check this out. Uh, maybe like uh, disconnect your camera, then like reconnect. How the hell? Okay. Well, uh, Star, I sent you the uh, link to the site that I found. Oh, it. thank you, thank you. No problem. Oh, David William. Oh, wait, hold on. This Pinterest link. Interesting, interesting. That's there the we go. What, say what you want about being Pinterest is for females. Pinterest has got some good stuff on it. Uh, you can find some great stuff for D&D &D on Pinterest. I, I found some amazing stuff for when I was uh, working on this shield-based character. That was kind of like, no, uh, like the, the, the Irish dude from uh, Samurai, uh, the Scotsman from Samurai Jack. I don't mm. know. I don't like Pinterest because they don't be giving credit to people. <laughs> It's the only reason that I don't use it, because, like, motherfucker, I need credits! Credits! <laughs> Would it be possible to say that you don't take credit for this and whoever is the owner of it to feel free to take credit for it? Yeah, maybe, maybe somebody could own up and be like, yeah, I made that. <laughs> That'd be nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that would be yeah. cool. Yeah, someone in the audience need to fess up right now. <laughs> if you yeah. made this really cool... Oh, wait, is this a Dicey Jones? No, wait. Maybe? That's the only name I see on here, Dicey Jones. Dicey Jones. <laughs> I don't think that's the name of who made this. Dicey Jones, if you're out there, speak up or forever hold the yeah. seat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shout out to Dicey Jones. Fess up, man. We need I'm to know. Just to make my homebrew character. <laughs> yeah, listen. Oh, damn. Change a couple of words on it, and it'll be your own thing, just like high school. Hey, hey. <laughs> and let, let me just uh, change it up a little bit so the teacher don't know. Yeah. Look, yeah, that's that's all I have for uh, for that today. Hope you enjoyed gargoyles. Oh, Ryan, what do you think? Do you take? Think you could take one? Let's say I'm, like basic, like granite, like basic stone gargoyle. So he, here's the thing, Sam. Yeah, yeah. We've gone over in the past that I keep weapons in my car. Uh, that's true. Uh, You're loaded. On, on each door. Hang uh, on you. Yeah. Exactly. So my passenger side, I keep a two and a half pound hammer. Uh -huh, it, uh -huh. Yeah, you know, it's a, good. it's good. It's got that little smithing hammer uh, double end uh, to it. It it feels good in the hand. Uh, fucking hickory. And then on the driver's side, I keep two blades. Now, obviously, mm -hmm. I'd have to lean over a little bit to kind of reach down into uh, the passenger side to grab my hammer. But then, like... <laughs> Right, I'd be right. at a bit of a disadvantage. Yeah, hammer and chisel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I take a knife, and that's my chisel. Now this knife's gonna get fucked up, no question. But Absolutely. like, uh, you know, if I can just uh, go with the old Heshi strat of just ch uh, chisel away <laughs> <laughs> that gargoyle dick. Oh yeah. <laughs> you ever been punched in the dick before? That shit hurts. Yeah, you <laughs> I bet it's worse gargoyle. to get chiseled. What do you do if they don't if they don't have one? What if they're smooth down there? I'm oh, not even shit. Off, I'm not even gonna chisel off the whole dick. I'm just gonna make their shit smaller. That's how I win the fight. I mean, <laughs> He's just gonna I reshape hurt, it. Hurt their pride. <laughs> they're, they're gonna feel so inadequate and so ashamed of how small their penis just became that they cannot look me straight in the eye and fight me. And that's when I come in with the sneak attack. Ah. Damn. That's mm. really good. <laughs> works every time. I respect it. I respect it. <laughs> it's a power play. Uh damn. Uh <laughs> I think I would give them uh a seven out of ten for they got wings and mobility, so that's some hard shit to contend with. Yeah. Uh, I'd have to be I strategic. Would, I would think about them having like maybe like a weak flight, you know, like clumsy flyers. They are they would be relatively heavy, I imagine. No, uh, like it if they got this dude, they got the weight on me, and you know how weight yeah. classes are when it's like a Fight. I mean, they're, they're solid stone, right? They're probably heavy as shit. Yeah, <laughs> they're like, like statues. Are gargoyles like, sexless, sexless? I don't know. Because if they're not, and oh, I'm you, all you know what, I wouldn't want to assume. That I'm would mean sure. that they're. Like, I imagine it would it would depend on. That. I think they would be. I want to roll to seduce the female gargoyle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't see why there couldn't be female gargoyles. I, I heard think there was one in the show, right? I heard the Gargussie be gripping. 
Goosey. <laughs> the car Goosey be gripping. Look, that man. is the deity quote of the week, everybody. Find the, find the gold. <laughs> gold. Ah, uh, dude, that's that's great. Soft, get that soft, you know, texture. <laughs> uh, honestly, I, I think the the main thing with trying to oh. beat one of these things is just having a lot of heavy objects that you can weaponize around you. So yeah. Or it's full, it. like henchman status. Like... Area. I would, they need the mobility to fly around and use their attack. Yeah, yeah you, you can like mm. get them inside, get them boxed in. Yeah, I mean, their, their main the uh, attacks are Underbelly. biting and claws. So, like, if I could trick them into like flying into something, yeah, that that'd be my only real chance. Otherwise, I'd get ripped apart. The, the, there's no question. Like, indoors, like the only chance. I think they're, get they're them like indoors, as big as like it, a person. And like, yeah, you oh, gotta yeah, like pretty... sidestep them, and while they're busy crashing into whatever they're, I guess it would depend on. Them. Yeah, the, 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 the sidestep, they crash into something, and you go in for like the the nape of the neck, like a fucking attack on Titan, but with you gotta a hammer. Go straight for like the horns and the wings. Oh, that's like... cool. <laughs> that's yeah, cool. yeah. Straight for like the horns and the wings, and I'm fucking. <laughs> what if? It, oh, you, Starboy, you said that it was warlocks or wizards that created them? It, it could be either. You know, it depends. So would it be possible if, I, if, I'm, if, I'm, if my PC is mm-hmm. a spell user, mm-hmm. I not have the ability to command the creature to follow mm-hmm. Oh, you're, um, you're talking about turning off the magic. Oh, to, 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 to charm a gargoyle? Yeah. Honestly, it would depend on the, you know, the DM. But I well, think maybe like, maybe I think it depends on the situation. Because if it um, was given a, if it was given a directive to protect this place, da 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 da, I don't necessarily have to make it work for me. I could trick it into thinking that its directive has been fulfilled and allow the party to continue. Yeah. Hmm. Honestly, everything- uh, now that I really think about it, if I was to try to fight one of these things, my only real edge is the hammer, a, a <laughs> confined space. And enough prep time for me to make a bomb. You assume, though, <laughs> that if you break it into pieces, that it still want to be able to move. It's Dude, hard. if I, mean, I break it yeah, into I mean, pieces, it should be too. a whole lot easier if I blow it the I, fuck up. <laughs> I would imagine you break it, it dies. If it's an- well, maybe. Because if it's animated by magic, it should be able to continue moving by magic. Yeah, that I mean, until scary. it can't, you know, maybe it anymore. You can make that a scary-ass gargoyle. Like yeah, some it's like a zombie gargoyle. Dude, <laughs> you like break you the arm it. off, the arm still comes for you. <laughs> Maybe if you combine some of you know what'd be truly terrifying. Combine like a little is, bit of gargoyle and vampire stat block. Yeah. Because ideally the thought is with a gargoyle or a construct like this, they have a centralized core that their, you know, their mm. use kind of emanates from. Okay, but okay. Like, it's like a constant flow, kind of like a heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the center so of the Tootsie like a, like, battery, you know. So it's not like a golem. It's, it actually has something that's powering it. Yeah, or some cases. Like, in, in a lot of cases, gargoyles are empowered by the area they're placed in. You know? So oh. how many bricks does it take to get to the center of a gargoyle? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, that's great. Because, like, a lot of the cases in, like, D&D, you know, it'll be like a wizard will make gargoyle and they'll be like, you know, you guys will sit on top of my tower and make sure nobody comes here. And that's mm, kind of yeah. Like, you know, like I, like I had a, you know, gargoyles interact with our party. I think I talked about it a little bit, you know? Oh you yeah. They, they had a riddle, riddle and then the like my Requiem. character yeah. <laughs> uh, had a counter riddle. <laughs> it was so good. Yeah. They were kind of like the, the laissez fair more, you know, gargoyles. And they were, you know, one of them kind of had a thrill for combat was you know the more you know, I'll protect this physically. The other one was more mm. magically inclined. You know, I like but, that. You know, I, I like that dynamic. Protecting a bard college, you know, it was very in tune to them. I think. Yeah, that, that was a lot of. <laughs> I really liked that because yeah. most of the time you never see a gargoyle with the ability to cast spells. Given mm-hmm. we didn't get to actually fighting it, but the heavy implication that it could have been casting spells at us the entire time. That was hanging in the air. It's just like, okay, well, we might have some spellcasters in the party, but we, except for Esra, they're not really equipped for dealing with spellcasters, you know? 
And I believe um, I was able to kind of display that the spells that you did see it cast were kind of like, oh, uh, gives you the impression of like a high level spell cast. Yeah, exactly. And I'm just I'm like, pretty no, sure it man, teleported you all the way that. with a teleportation circle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's just like, no, no. The, the, the things that it could do, forget about it. You know, yeah. <laughs> like the the I believe his name was Ravon was like, yeah, didn't even like want to fight you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a real chill dude. Like as an NPC, I liked that. Moving on to uh, yeah. another uh, little bit for our news, though, I, oh, yeah, I did I did pull up some news for this week. Yeah, now we've been putting it off for long enough. Go ahead. Yeah. So right here. uh Maybe I should minimize this a little bit more. It's a little annoying. Uh, there's a new Kickstarter coming out uh, at this uh, this month. Well, not this month, but October. So basically mm -hmm. this month, because today's the 30th. Right. So this is uh, October. Happy Halloween. Woo. <laughs> Ooh, spooky, <laughs> scary, it's scary. Halloween time. <laughs> Go. <Yeah. laughs> uh, Halloween's a fun time. But this it, this whole supplement that's being put together is called A Life Well Lived. And it aims to fill in the gaps of the typical encounters we see in classic uh, RPGs. And it works on fleshing out your character origins, backstories, and even what happens uh, after the quest day is over after you retire what happens before you become an adventurer what happens when you like uh, go on hiatus and then come back you know mm. like when your you have characters a kid, have a life like, yeah yeah uh, and now like our buddy of the show uh dm josh he has no problem with this like uh, i've heard him talk about his campaigns on a regular basis where his <laughs> players have families they have kids they have all kinds of shit right. like uh, their characters get passed on generationally like oh, not a problem but like, like a lot that. of people leave this shit out now I'm, I'm i look at this a little bit and uh, skimming over the article i'm just like dude aren't you basically like reinventing xanathar's guide like at the start of xanathar's like there's a whole this whole thing bunch of role tables for developing your backstory uh family relations uh oh. whether you were poor or rich or like uh whether your parent how many parents were in the household and like this kind of uh adds to that with like what are you doing afterwards what what are you doing yeah. in between big long quests and i like the concept and we'll see more from the kickstarter after it uh, fully gets a uh, launched and ready to go and i'm looking forward to seeing what they bring out oh yeah man. Hell yeah. i i really do like uh, what they're going for because it kind of in, embraces the idea of letting characters retire and simulating what happens after after they hang up the sword after they put the spell book away you know absolutely and i think it should it, from what I've skimmed over here, it looks like they're going to be putting a little bit more into uh, maybe businesses that characters run. And, you know, 5th edition has been lacking on the business side of things. Mm -hmm. Even in uh, books like Acquisitions Incorporated, which are very business centric, it's just like still kind of you're, you're caught lacking. You know? Right, right. And then moving on. We have uh, Dimension 20 is going to be returning to uh, at, like this month is their five year anniversary, I believe. Oh, sure. so Look at them go. Hell yeah. Yeah, dude, they started in really cool. they started in 2018 and they're going to be launching another campaign starting in January. So, dude, where's the time? Are they present for me? <laughs> yeah, nice. basically oh yeah oh dude january coming up that's gonna be our anniversary for the show one year oh yeah oh, oh hey mm. Look, we gotta do something special then we, we do we have to do something special for that i would love to like you know bring back some fun guests like do a big old thing Thank what the big old thing is, Harley I don't know saying we have the perfect host voices we appreciate oh. you <laughs> 
Ooh, uh, you know, we spend so much time doing things miles apart. You're in one state. I'm in another. Let's do it in person. Hey, someday, someday soon. Hopefully. Someday. Uh, one can dream, one can hope. But yeah, we are hoping to see more of like a, what Dimension 20 comes out with. I haven't really checked out much of their content, but tons of people uh, that I talk to about it really enjoy it. And I want other people to be able to enjoy such things. You know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. And then finishing out our little news segment here. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. So... Have you guys ever heard of uh, Rebel Moon? It's a uh, it's a tabletop uh, studio that uh, they have. Uh, apparently, they're suing Netflix over canceling an adaptation. <laughs> yeah, they're suing <laughs> Netflix. Good. Honestly, I'm fucking tired of Netflix canceling things. You know what? They canceled Zom 100, and I'm fucking, fucking mad. I don't know if Netflix did it. Netflix One of them did it. Well, somebody that. canceled it, which is kind <laughs> of coming out of left it. field because they I'm came in mad. hot with not one version of it, but two. They hit it with two. the anime and the live action at the it's same time. Crazy. <laughs> like, how are you coming in so hot? Then, like, oh, hiatus man. immediately done. Zom 100 was so good. Bro, like if, if you like Zom 100, upvote this video. Also, if you like. Gargoyles, send us like good rating. <laughs> uh, give us all the love for your gargoyles. <laughs> Maybe even right. leave a sub if you like gargoyles. Yeah, yeah, and sub for the gargoyles. Leave a link in uh, the tell description. Tell us your gargoyle Love's stories. The Netflix sue lawsuit. All right. <laughs> yeah. So Netflix, put good shows on to keep them on. <laughs> so it's a uh, canceled adaptation of a Zack Snyder movie. Snyder. I'm tired of this. Okay, so. They're saying that it un that Netflix unfairly pulled the release of its uh, Rebel Moon RPG. I'm like, okay, okay, what? What I didn't do know Netflix had, uh, like what RPGs? Like, what what do they mean? I don't was know, there, like a show for Rebel Moon that was coming out or something. I, I'm let's see here. Uh, I'll read the article right here. So. Uh, yeah. A tabletop RPG publisher is suing streaming giant Netflix over its canceled adaptation of upcoming Zack Schneider movie R Rebel Moon. So it's a movie. Oh. They, they, they pulled yeah. a movie. It's supposed to so, be Zack's version of Star Wars. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I did hear about this. Oh, I'm, yeah. You know what? I'm going to pop it up on screen. Like, look, look at that's uh, some. Uh, you know what? just saw the trailer for this like the other day i did too <laughs> not anymore they oh, canceled that man. shit i think did i remember they? like laying here watching it i was like huh <laughs> they're <laughs> saying that netflix uh offered them 50k to base to quote to basically go away and <laughs> what man dude you know, i'll take 50k hey, look, in hush money i'm, not I'm poor Wars enough star wars stand and i i am on kind of the side of like there's too many star wars movies, you know but if this is like its own kind of thing and it says epic space opera so like this seems different right like it looks different enough i mean like uh you know those are like, laser like, oh those aren't the... lasers those are like a uh, burning hot swords dude. Okay. red hot you know what i'm kind of into it because you know what? i'm kind of tired of star wars so like <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Star Wars had had so long to get their shit together. Decades. Oh. And then came Dave Filoni, and he nailed it with a couple of the animated series. But then they decided to oh, hand everything great. over to Dave Filoni, which we thought was a good idea. But then they try to saddle Dave Filoni with live action stuff. And it's like, dude, da leave Dave Filoni in his element. Don't don't go, yeah. go giving him live action shit. Nobody likes that. Like, it's yeah, a Dave restrictive media. I don't mean to interject, but no, I think the Same only, energy. I mean, besides the sequels, I think the only way, how do I, how do I say it? Right? I'm sorry. Yeah. Star Wars fucked up when they took all of the stuff that was in the books, the extended universe mm. and the legends and stuff like that mm. and made it not canon. Yes. Yeah. By making Definitely a big not, ball drop there and, and not in the, the fixing your voice and making it deeper kind of way, you know, just like. <laughs> They, they fucked it. They're like, hey, all this content 
that we could just turn into movies or TV shows and just pump it out in easy money. No, we're just not. None Look, of man, it. I'm going to I'm going to die on this hill. It cannot be that hard to make a good movie or a good TV show that people want. That your fans have been saying that they've wanted for oh, 10 be. years. Like how out of touch? Like, do you have to be like, dude? The, the stuff's already written, and like, it's already written. Like, yeah, like it was already written. People already liked it, and then of course, oh. with the in typical Hollywood fashion, like, oh, we got this fucking writer strike that just finished up recently. Hollywood caved in. It's like, okay, cool. So you gave into a bunch of these writers. First off, what have they done for me lately? As far as writing goes, my wife was in, uh, I, I'm sitting around, my wife's watching The Walking Dead and some other show, and I'm just like, you know, minding my own business, working on the computer uh, for getting ready for the podcast. I turn my head around and be like, what the fuck is this writing here? Like, it's you dog know, it's shit. It's probably the producers that's doing it to them, and it's probably not always the writer, you know? But like, it's not because, uh, come on. If we're going like, to talk like, <laughs> talk about those to die on i'm gonna die on this hill forgive me if it's oh, not misogynistic but please. media no, today please. all the misogyny <laughs> a lot of media today uh written by women are more in the woke side of things oh, yeah. self-insert True. of things take um mm-hmm. take what's that chick that did the new velma show oh the 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 mindy chick yeah uh, mindy kaling i i th- well, yeah. that's shitty, not because of the woke. It's shitty because she decided that Velma was her OC. Yeah, but here's the thing. That is a show about a woman written by a woman. I have, yeah. you know, personally myself, just to see, I mean, I might be biased because I'm a man, but I have watched movies and shows of women mm. characters that were written by men, like um, Sigourney Weaver's character from Aliens. Um mm. Sarah Connor from Terminator, badass woman. Like, yeah, they still had their vulnerable moments and stuff, but they weren't like, oh, I'm going to twerk my aunt. Like, dog. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Well, when it comes to male writers writing female characters, you got two types. You got people like Masashi Kishimoto who can't write a female character to save his life. Where he's just like, okay, I got female character and female character not going to do anything really important because I don't know how to do that. And then you got like uh, people that are like, okay, I'm going to write a female character. But the point is that it's a character, not mm. that it's female. You know what I mean? Like you, right. you should write the character and it the is, gender comes later. It doesn't matter. Especially you end up with things like, like the Megan the Fox, world. where she could have been pivotal to the story. But instead, mm. they turned her into a pretty face, right? Yeah. Like, I'm sure there's some D and D stuff to be learned from how to write a fucking character. Because, like, yeah. when your NPCs come rolling around, like, okay, you shouldn't. The draw of this character shouldn't be that this character is female or this character is black. It should be that this character is. A genuinely fun character. Every other trait after that doesn't matter. They're well, just think, extra. You know. I also think the problem is that, like, you know, these writers and these producers right. don't watch their own shit. They Look don't read the you know, from stuff from their views. They uh, don't even really know what they're making. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. That's how I feel. They're just like, what are we pumping out this week? All right, the fifteenth Star Wars movie. All right, go ahead. Uh, yeah, because like uh, the first half of them weren't movie. trash. Like, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, cool. We got the next Marvel movie coming up in six months. All right, boom. Like, oh, I'm Emperor, Pal- Emperor Palpatine died in yeah, like, Return, uh, Return of the Jedi, but somehow he just returned. Literally, is what they also, said, bro. In the movie, when they he when he I, made his comeback, this is the response. How did he come back? Somehow Palpatine just came back. <laughs> this Great is super off topic. But like, <laughs> <laughs> but like, uh, yeah, DMs, oh don't bring your villains back like that. <laughs> I, feel like writing, I feel like writing, it's, it's something that I've noticed with video games too. Back in the day, video games had shitty ass graphics, limited amount of space that they can work with. So they really had to sell you on either the gameplay mm-hmm. or the story. And when yeah. I had 10 times, it was the fucking story. But then graphics started getting better. The game world started getting bigger. You could do more. Mm. 
things started becoming more interactive. So I feel like stories just start getting put on the, that was just, okay, this is the bare bones that's going to make it go forward. I yeah, think, because a lot of people don't read that shit anyway. You know? I think the last game that had so, a good So they're book. like, you know, they're but like, why should we bother writing this story if nobody's going to read it? But I feel like it's the mm. same way with movies. Movies are now like, I got to make, I got to make the graphics. Right. I got to make the CGI look really yeah. good. I got to make the set really, look really good. My mm. actors be really pretty and handsome and stuff. Mm-hmm. They're more worried about, you know, it being in your face and, you know, pushing and I, whatever I, they're pushing. I understand, like. I understand as, as, as time goes by, originality starts to become a little bit harder mm-hmm. and harder. You know what I'm saying? Mm. That doesn't mean that you should really? have a lack of time. Exactly. Yeah, like, it's one of those things where the story and characters are the mainstay of everything. And this goes. This is true for media. This is true for D and D. So if you're a DM out there and you're making your NPCs and you want your care the, the party to love them, just like you can be off the cuff and just like make something. But as soon as like the party kind of latches on or like thinks that something is cool and they show interest, that's when you start developing them, and then you can make them interesting. But what makes them interesting is like it's the little things, you know it. It's not mm-hmm. like a necessarily the silly voice, although the silly voice is certainly a part of it. Mm-hmm. It's just like, and you know what? You got to make them Sorry, compelling. Look, look, this is a thing that people like to, people hate critical role for a lot of reasons, right? Oh. They, they hate people that relate their characters to critical role. People that like want to be like Matt Mercer, you know, they want to be as good of a DM, have a party like him. I understand, right? But the thing about critical role is that like, their players are actors, right? They know how to play a character. They know how to get you hooked on their story, on mm. their background. They know how to play their shit. They know how to get into it. Yeah. And, like, not everybody can be, like, you know, unfortunately. Like, yeah. you know, being able to to kind of, like, you know, let yourself embody the character that you're able to just kind of make, you know, it really kind mm. of goes crazy. It It, it is. Like, a. The most compelling uh, side characters that I had when I was running the last game I had was like Gorko, uh, the yeah, little Gorko goblin dude. Great. Yeah, people loved him because he was small, but he was trying. He, he was out yeah. there like putting he's in strong, danger. Good. And then when he got his, him, when he had, you know, the vibe check from God of almost dying, he's like, <laughs> okay, listen. I, I can't keep doing this. I have to take a step back <laughs> for my honest, own safety because so I'm not good enough to help you guys yet. You know, yeah. like have the having the NPCs have self awareness of like what they're yeah, doing. Ultimately, these are I try to like remind my players. You know, your character is not just a character; it's supposed to be like a person too, right? This is a life you're creating, a life you're living through them. Mm. You know, feel free to like get into their emotions, you know, have them be mad about a situation. Be like, this shit fucking sucks. Like, <laughs> I want to go to an end. I don't know. You know, something like that. Like, yeah, like, uh, like Bees said last week, sometimes, you know, the bathhouse episode is a mm-hmm. great way to shake things up. I mean, our our party, we, we spend too much time doing the shopping episode. And like, you know, <laughs> for some people, they have a lot of fun with that. Others, not mm-hmm. so much. I think like one of those things where, it's an anime trope for a reason that you have the shopping yeah. episode, the beach episode. You got the hot, the, you know, the the bathhouse, the hot mm-hmm. springs. Like yeah. these are little things that can kind of build on character. That's the thing. People hate those for you know the obvious fan servicey reason, like they're unnecessary to the story. But they know what they are are necessary for building the character connection. Like mm. Building your connection to these characters, kind of giving you a reason of like, see, these characters have lives outside of the story that you see in the normal, you know, setup. Like, absolutely, give you this sense of like, these are people, like, you know, they're doing stuff. Uh, yeah, like, uh, say with the like the bathhouse thing. Oh, one party member has been hiding a scar the entire time. They're always wearing all this armor and shit. You you yeah. go and you and yeah, like and the bathhouse like and then like of- you look at the the side of them and you just see like this real ugly scar from like a traumatic event in their childhood and it's just like holy shit what the fuck just ha- what what is that yeah, and Why? if you have a role play heavy party you know these are great scenarios to set up for them you know mm. if they're not role play heavy sometimes like just giving yeah. them some 
light stuff to work with can be a little bit of fun. Yeah. You ever put them in like a calming scenario? Just let them kind of like, what do you want your character to do? You know, what would they do in this situation? You know, like, what would they do in their comfortable, safe time? And that's kind of what the Kickstarter we went over earlier is aiming exactly. to do. Like, what do they do during those periods of safety and being well off? Like, uh, my brother's character in the the acquisitions game, Mikkel, he retired. He he left the party. He he mm-hmm. took uh, the 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 teenage bard that got kicked out of every bar in town with him as an apprentice and just left. Hell yeah. <laughs> the, nice. the fact that he took an apprentice and left the party was hilarious for me. I do love that. That's pretty great. <laughs> like it's okay to retire a, a character mid campaign and like having it work story wise. It's like, okay, they're pursuing their own uh, plot line. It's like, okay, you can have a new character. And if the new character dies, old character can come back right. with a completed character arc. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. You see that? potential there speaking of but before we get uh, too off the rails uh oh aheshi you had something to say i was gonna say speaking of retiring and ah uh, so uh heshi uh it's been great having you with us Mm -hmm. where can people find you plug your shit my guy all right so if they really want to follow me they can follow me on youtube heshi cricket life just how it's spelled right on the screen um it's funny you're talking about that because there's a cricket in my room somewhere. Somewhere. I, <laughs> I can hear that. <laughs> my minion, if you don't do it, yeah. say, he will f- Damn. find you. Hey, get your ass out of my room, man. Uh, <laughs> know everything that you're doing. Dang. But with that being said, um, <laughs> on YouTube, the only other form of media that I have right now is my Twitch. Same, 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 same thing. Mm-hmm. Hetchy Cricket Life. Um, uh, it was a pleasure being on the show. I'd love to come back. Uh, I'd love to be uh, more involved with uh, any other activities or things like uh, D&D invol- involvement. Absolutely. Uh, we do stream our D&D games on Sunday nights, and mm-hmm. Sam's looking to wrap up our campaign within the next uh, few months or so. So yeah. I think that might be a good chance for us to kind of uh, – switch uh, dms right there so he can get to take a that player seat again i can hop uh, in the dm seat uh we can oh, get yeah uh, you ready like to hop a, back in the dm seat you know what? i i've been kind of wanting to for a while and i got some uh, books on the shelf that i can adapt to the one piece setting so it's oh, just yeah, like so okay that's gonna be the one you're gonna go with is a one piece it's one of those things where i tell people all the time make what you know and know it well I'm over a thousand episodes deep in One Piece. I can throw all kinds of random ass shit that I know at you guys. And we have several it'll be fun. big One Piece fans in the server. I'll I'm pretty sure. You. Don't worry. Yeah, man. Mm. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Have a good night, Hashi man. Thanks for coming. Yeah. It was great. Having you. Stay safe. Mm. We got the links to all of your stuff in the description. All right. Hi. And pretty good timing because we're going to be wrapping up here quite soon. <laughs> yeah, man. You too. All right. Now, let's see here. I'm going to just uh, blink out his things because I really should have made this a little easier on myself. <laughs> but there. So now I think now is a good time to uh, get into your Descriptify or our homebrews for tonight. Well, we'll hit the Descriptify real quick because yeah. it, it's just a small Descriptify this week. Oh, yeah. And the, this week's Descriptify is Rampart. Ooh, I like that. Ooh, one. they're coming in from the Ramparts. Actually, you know. Really now, when you think Rampart, Sam, what do you? What's the first thing that comes to your mind? Ramparts are like okay, so there's like the gate, right? And then you have like the wall that kind of like hugs the gate. Isn't the Rampart like that? That part of the wall, you know. So it ramparts are a protective barrier, a a bulwark, if you will. Uh, They're kind of like a broad embankment of raised or fortified uh, area, usually uh, surrounded by like a a parapet. Yeah. Okay. 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 I got you. It could be like a wall-like ridge. So, like, say you have like a a big old higher up 
flat area, right? Right. So open up a picture of it this time, or no, no. I okay. Actually, I, I could. Let me just uh, I'll a picture of a rampart. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll pull up some imp- some images. Hopefully, not associated with rampart the, 20- the movie. Yeah. Yeah, not the 2011 movie Rampart. <laughs> <laughs> not to oh, be yeah, confused. Yeah, this is what I was thinking of. So, like, the part of the, the, the castle walls where it's, like, the tower, and they have, like, the little, like, looks like teeth, you know? <laughs> yeah, Those so, are, like, I, I'm kind of, like, scrolling through, like, that's a Rampart right there in the center. That little, uh, it's raised, it's castle wall. Like, uh, they can, like, shoot down from people. Uh, there, There's, yeah. like, uh, there'll be, like, raised areas, like... Like, the ramparts we watch. Uh, ra- yeah, like uh, you can see way too many references to movie apparently because I guess that was a thing. Okay, so yeah, they're pretty. Uh, cool. I I should have thought that out, but ooh, like uh, yeah, these are the things that, like the archers would like hide behind or like they shoot from. Yeah, the like uh, they're just be uh, like higher up embankments, like uh, right. like man-made high ground, really. You know. Right. So like that, that flat behind the little, like they'll have like those little cubbyhole things to hide behind, but not always. Right, right. Oh yeah, you're quite a picture. Nice, nice to see. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I do like some of these. Like that's a good rampart. It, the castle high grounds, effectively. Mm-hmm. I like it. I like it. And it's just, like people don't use like. You kind of knew what a rampart is right off, but like uh, when people think rampart, it's like, okay, a castle, like not enough to describe the castle. Ramparts, you know? Mm-hmm. Right, it's just a right. fun word. So, what you got for homebrew this week, Sam? You know, real quick, while I'm looking at it, your frame is bigger than mine. <laughs> not to be like, you know, that guy, like, hey, man, you're a little bigger than me. But like, <laughs> oh, is, is it? Yeah, a little bit. Hmm. Looking from border to border. Yeah, okay. Anyway, but yeah, for homebrew uh, this uh, week. Uh, I, you know, Control Z, I fucked it up for a moment there. <laughs> oh, I, yeah. I, I thought I sized up uh, well before. It's just like uh, my border is wider. It might be an mm-hmm. optical illusion. Because I think I set the pixels to be about the same. Maybe. It's like you got like a, this fancy dragon thing that kind of like uh, that has like it's not as thick as my border, but <laughs> we'll look into that another time because yeah. we're going so, to it, you know, yeah. the classic yeah. generic realm. Oh, what the heck? Stranger Gee. danger. That's the That's wrong the one. Wrong one. <laughs> generic realm. Generic there you go. realm. Lots, Lots of fun. fun. Uh, it's always sunny in the generic realms. Oh yeah, Treat yelling. I'm bigger than you. I'm bigger than you. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So uh, I want you to go ahead and put up a picture of the you know the page for this one. I'm going to talk about the half Raiju race that was created by Jade Callie in our Discord. So okay, half. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, I gave you the link for that. Well, let me just uh, pull up a thing right here because yeah, yeah. I that was the one thing I didn't prep. I, I forgot to. But yeah, uh, you tell us a little bit about it as I get it pulled up here. So it is pretty much what it sounds like. Um, the Raiju, if anyone recognizes that word, you know, I think of Smite immediately. You know, you got uh, Raiju. It's a thunder god, and that you know he has a little cute little cat. Thing, you know, um, you also get connections like you know Kitsune and you know the weasels, you know, things like that. So the race they are a weasel, they are a race of <laughs> weasel type beast men. Sorry, I can read that are descended from the Raiju and can sometimes be considered almost like an evolution, as they were once pets of the giants with no ability to speak or walk on two legs. Um, I had to of refresh the it for a moment because I had my dark mode on. <laughs> nice, nice. So it says and... here, um, because of this evolution, the half Raiju is more humanoid than the regular Raiju. They are considered weaker than those of the full breed. 
half rides were able to do more tasks as they are much more intelligent than what they were descended from. Uh, they were considered relentless in the pursuit of their prey and are often found in forest type areas near where giants live or that of other humanoid species. So, and this is kind of uh, one of the few player races that we're going to talk about here. You know, we have a plus two to dex and a plus two to wi- or a plus one to wisdom. So pretty good. <laughs> um, so we got the half raju traits. They can use their claws in battle and are resistant to lightning damage and can s- and have dark vision. Um, to be common. <laughs> uh, Sam, your camera's acting up again. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Uh, clearly professionals on this podcast. Ah, there we go. We got to reset things constantly. M- maybe one day we'll get there. Maybe in time for the anniversary. Lest one of us forget. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Yeah, they have the base walking speed of 30. Pretty good, pretty standard. Um, base size is medium or small. Your choice, interesting. And lastly, they have an electric aura, which they can use a number of times equal to the proficiency bonus. Okay. Dude, I am a sucker for uh, lightning and electricity. I love it. It courses through me. I have you to know, struggle. Who doesn't love with it? You know, look, it's good. Who doesn't love like the hot furry Kitsune cat girls? All right, look. Uh, scrolling <laughs> up to show us some of that hot Kitsune cat girl action, like a uh, dude. Uh, well, clearly uh, they're uh, they're more weasel based, but I think weasels are underrated. Like when I first started D anD D, whenever I would get a familiar. I'd always go for the weasel because I played a lot of third edition. I do like weasels. Weasels are cool. Yeah. What? So talking about the electric aura here, starting at fifth level. The personally, I feel like fifth level is a little high. Um, but after a creature touches you or hits you with a melee attack, you can use your reaction to force that creature to make a constitution saving throw. DC eight plus your intel plus your proficiency bonus plus your wisdom, intelligence, or charisma modifier. Chosen when you select this race. Uh, on a failed save, the target takes 2d6 lightning damage. No, I, I think that's kind of appropriate considering how uh, 2d6 mm-hmm. lightning damage could, like, if a party member decided to hit you for some reason, that has the potential to outright kill somebody. I mean, I could see this being like a level 3 ability. It wouldn't be that different from, you know, the most things people get. And there is uh, also an additional that I think is pretty cool. When a creature fails a saving throw, you can overwhelm them with electricity, causing them to become paralyzed until the end of the next turn. Hmm. Uh, you must finish a long rift for paralyzing a creature this way again. Dude, going back to the One Piece stuff, there's, this distinctly reminds me of the Mink tribe in One Piece. Oh, They're yeah? a it bunch was. of furries, and they have like this uh, electric uh, shock ability where they can like uh, add electricity to their attacks whether it's a weapon or a hand attack oh, that's so really it's like cool. they go to claw you lightning I claw having, you know I see these having that ability you know and i could definitely see you know you flesh this out a little bit more you could add some really cool things i like it a lot i think it's so pretty well flushed i mean like Jade, they got the lightning uh, resistance uh, here like, the dark vision pretty standard mm-hmm. uh raiju claws look at that for uh that's pretty good to start out with the uh, just oh, a yeah, basic claw the attack Oh, yes. Because of your claws, you have a climbing speed equal to your walking speed. Pretty standard, like it's a backseat. In addition, your claws are natural weapons, also like it's a backseat. Uh, when you hit with them, you deal slashing damage equal to 1d6, your strength modifier. I would probably say you strength and or your dex. Um, mm. But, yeah, that's, that's pretty standard, you know. Uh, they should definitely have, you know, maybe like a d6 mm. of lightning damage on them. I would say uh, definitely keep it in the realm of the strength modifier, because, like, if you do dex, then you're kind of delving into the area of uh, taking away from what makes monk good. But these are these are dex creatures, so why wouldn't they use their dex for their claws? It's one of those things where y- you gotta be it. You don't want to make uh, monks meaningless to be. You know what I mean? Yeah, but like these aren't monk creatures. <laughs> like these would be. But more you could of- choose to be. I mean, yeah, you could, you could, but like monks can use dex too. Like, dude, no reason actually, to, you know. a raiju monk would be very powerful because they, because yeah. I mean, then their unarmed strikes would deal a d6 of slashing out of the gate, 
and they'd be able to use their uh, flurry of blows dealing mm-hmm. this D6 out of the gate. Yeah. And then like and by the time they get to level 5, they got that it. lightning back the fuck off. It, it's the yeah. whole set. You could set this shit up for crazy, you know, abilities. Yeah, I think like I'm saying, like in the deck modifier would just make more sense for the sense of synergy with the rest of the kit. But mm. yeah. <laughs> I don't see why. It's true, you know, but for sure, for sure, I like. Mm. It. There's synergy, and then there's game balance, and I, I think yeah, uh, I understand. I'm always on the side of I probably prefer the synergy, and then I would balance it myself, you know. If it was a little too strong or something. I think that's just uh, how you are as a DM. Like if someone yeah, brings something to the totally table, you're like, hey, let me synergize this a little bit better just so that right. you're more comfortable as a player. And that's right. one of the right. things that I like about your DM style. Like you're like, OK, yeah, well, let, let's work on it. You know, let's see what we can make. Because like in my brain, when I think about it, I think of like. Like, a, like, I think of like a game mindset, you know, if you scale, have a weapon that scales with decks, you're doing a dex build. You know, <laughs> like, you want to? I think full Dark Souls mode. You know? <laughs> oh, absolutely. I I like it. I would love to play one, and oh, I I will say this: I will allow it in my upcoming One Piece game when we get around to it. If somebody wants to play this race, because this is five E compatible, and the module well, not module the uh, source book that I'm using is 5e compatible so you should yeah. see if uh, jade wants to play in that game you should go Ooh. ahead and uh well, when you get the chance make a post and see who's it uh, that would be a good play test actually for this yeah. for uh, sure. i don't know if it's been play tested but like there's tons of material that i haven't been able to play test as a dm so like i might put some of those things on the table as well yeah you could have like a one piece one shot <laughs> <laughs> one piece <laughs> One right. piece, one shot. So speaking of uh, kind of Raiju storm themed stuff, I see you got a storm. Uh, we were ve- yes, yes. We were very on a point with uh, what we chose for t- yeah. tonight because, like, I didn't expect us to kind of vibe with the same general like theme. Emotion, yeah. <laughs> Let me just uh, let's see. There we go. I bring to you. It, this is a fourth edition conversion, actually. Mm, cool. But it's not often that you see someone bringing in like a redone stuff from other editions of D and D. And this is just a fun cantrip. Also, a shout out to the person that did the art here because it looks amazing. All oh, that lightning, sexy as fuck. I love lightning. Oh, oh, yeah, that's super cool. So this is a cantrip storm pillar casting time. One action range 60 feet verbal oh, and somatic components instantaneous duration. Now, this spell is going to be available to sorcerers, warlocks and wizards. So the big three of casters for D&D. Oh, and yeah. it says here you create a magic pillar of crackling lightning in a unoccupied space that you can uh, see within range that it lasts until the end of your next turn. The pillar fills a five foot cube emits bright light out to five feet, dim light for an additional five feet and its space uh, costs uh, at 15 feet additional uh, movement to enter. Okay. Makes sense. Any creature or object that ends its turn within five feet of the pillar or that moves into uh, a space within five feet of it must succeed on a deck saving throw or, or take one D six lightning damage, a target uh, in water or, or made of metal or wearing armor made of metal has disadvantage on the saving throw. Okay. Each target uh, can take the, this damage no more than once per turn. The damage scales because it's a cantrip. So it'll increase by one D six at fifth level. Mm -hmm up to uh, 3d6 at 11th level and 4d6 at level 17. So it scales. I like this. It's an mm-hmm. AOE. You got to be a little tactical about your placement and lightning. And it's bringing back a classic cantrip from fourth edition, which I like. I love bringing back old stuff. Oh, yeah. 
I, I just then, like yeah. these kind of spells. <laughs> like, it's, just so mm. cool. it's fun. It's cool. Mm. Vis- like the visual in my mind, it's stunning. Yeah. No pun intended. It's so like, it's just like a thematic idea, you know. We don't it's, have enough AOE cantrips, and like, really, the, not that do anything, you know, notable. Exactly, and this is interesting. The damage is reasonable. I mean, what you damage like two, maybe three people, and it's like, okay, if you get three targets, then you're getting into some fun territory. But there's a saving a throw, it, so you know. That's- Interesting. Like, yeah like you can maximize this with like storm sorcerer or tempest cleric absolutely there's so many things you could fit this into you know yeah like the it. there are some design notes here a conversion of the 4e cantrip the storm pillar is an aoe control area denial option that synergizes with forced movement while it's a fourth edition counterpart would completely block an entire space with an indestructible obstacle this has been nerfed in 5e by converting it to a movement penalty its damage Mm. trigger has also been changed to trigger on any turn in exchange for activating once per turn okay so it's a little nerfed but i think overall it's generally balanced you know like i I like aoe's it's fun and it, it seems decent on the balance size because it it's not crazy damage. And if you place it right, it could be potentially. Mm. So shout out to uh, uh, Sur- Surrealist. Uh, I'll, I'll put the link to this in the description. And That's image right? by Fingers of really the Mountain. Cool. Okay. Ooh, what a nice name. Yeah, copyrighted from Zenimax Media Incorporated, Nuaro Studio Inc. So maybe that's like a, something from some big high end studio. I don't know, but damn if it look it, it looks amazing. It looks really cool. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I love the art. And with that, I think we've uh, reached the end of the show. Sam, is there anything you want to shout out? Uh, let our people mm-hmm. know. I want to say I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Hope you guys found your your new kindled love for the 90s TV show Gargoyles. <laughs> uh, I got to binge it with my kids. Give them a love for cool shit. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope you guys like our stuff. Well, you guys come back for the next one. Hope you Absolutely. have a good holiday. It is Halloween month. So shout out to everybody who loves Halloween. Oh, it's, it's going to be big. We're going to be celebrating Halloween with spooky monsters. Not going to go too stereotypical on those monsters. Yeah. We, some of our stuff might surprise you. And yeah. we are, are we having like a vote on like some of these on the Twitter oh, or we no? We definitely can. Oh yeah. We were, we were talking about that before and, uh, we are planning on finishing out the month with having my wife as a guest on the 28th, seeing as that's her birthday and I want her to feel included. Absolutely. And that'll be a good chance for us to do the vampire episode. Yeah, I was going to say, as a gift for her, I'll definitely be happy to talk about vampires. Uh, her favorite subject is vampires. So absolutely. And we'll go deep. I, I want to thank vampires. all of the people that have uh, joined us in stream tonight. Uh, you're with the encouragement and comments. It's great having y'all with us and we'll see y'all next week. Peace out, everybody. Enjoy the rest of the weekend. Enjoy this episode. (laughs) Pirates. Don't forget the pirates. (laughs) And yet shout out to the pirates. (laughs) Thank you. Josh ring. (laughs) Lord of ring. And we are all.